Hey guys, welcome to Level 4, the SAE Auto Drive Challenge Podcast. I'm Mike Sorg, video and podcast producer here for the SAE CDS series. If you've been out there in year one of Auto Drive, you might have seen me out there with the big orange shirt interviewing a lot of you guys in the auto drive space. Very excited today because today we're going to be talking about some great opportunities coming up with General Motors. We have with us today Nancy Martinelli. She is the engineering group manager in active safety, functional safety validation, working with automation, which is the exciting word of the day here, yes. right? How you doing, Nancy? I'm doing very well. Nice to meet you, Mike. Excellent. So we are um, talking today about General Motors recruitment. And uh, how long have you been with General Motors? I've been with General Motors, so that's kind of, it's a little bit complicated, but I've um, been with Gen General Motors overall about 25 years. A little wow. break in between, um, but 25 years total. That's great. That's great. And so tell me, tell me a little bit about work for GM. What, what, what is it like working there? What's the culture like? What's the best things about being there for, especially for that long? The best part about working at GM right now, I believe, is our leadership. Um, over the years, we've had, you know, several great leaders, but Mary Barra really stands stands apart from all of them. Uh, she's she has very high integrity and genuinely cares about our customers and our employees. Um, she sets a, good vi a great vision. She set a great vision for GM, which is the zero, zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion, which is a great vision for uh, the environment, uh, for our customers, and definitely for our employees. So the other uh, great thing about working for GM is there's such a variety of opportunities, especially for engineers. Um, we have um, everything from design, development, validation. We have performance. Uh, there's also all the launch activities once we get to the assembly plant. Uh, there's quality. There's manufacturing. Um, and as far as the products go, we have everything from seats to sheet metal, uh, engines, uh, the modules, the electronic modules, and then there are the things you don't see, like the software, the controls. We have uh, over-the-air programming that uh, you don't see, but it's a de definite benefit to our customers. We also have another great thing that was started a few years ago is the recognition program. And this program allows peers or managers to recognize anyone at GM for the work they're doing. And it can be as simple as helping out with, helping out with uh, putting a presentation together to a launch of a, a program. And managers can boost a recognition by giving points. And then the points can be spent. There's a catalog that has everything from jewelry to appliances to, to gift cards. So it's really fun to go through and spend your points. So it sounds like there's, there's, there's a lot to encourage people to kind of grow within, within GM. Yes, definitely. And there are a lot of opportunities to to move up and move into different different areas. So you can broaden as well as as move forward in your career. So, so tell me a little bit more about like what is a typical day at GM? The typical day varies by which campus you're actually on. And we have three main campuses, uh, the Warren Tech Center, uh, where we do a very small amount of vehicle testing. Most of the testing is on benches. And we have component benches to hardware in the loop or hill system benches. Uh, and we also have the battery test labs. There are a lot of offices as well at the Warren Tech Center. The Milford Proving Grounds is where we do most of our vehicle testing. Uh, we have over 200 miles of test track lanes at the Proving Grounds, and we have this allows us to have controlled environment for testing vehicles. Uh, so that's important for the safety of our engineers as well as the safety of the public. So we also have testing that's done at the Detroit Renaissance Center, which is along the Detroit River. And we have our testing for the connected experience apps and our back office. So you talked about a little bit before you mentioned the software, and, that, and I think that's really interesting, especially in this auto drive space uh, for a lot of the students that will be listening and participating, uh, because it is more than just like engine engineering, right? And, and and suspensions and things like that, which are also important. But now I hear so much about like there's an app for your phone or the software that goes into uh, the artificial intelligence or system controls and things like that. It, like it, it's it's really kind of expanded the kind of uh, minds that you guys need at General Motors, right? 
Yes, it has. So we used to have our suppliers do most of the software, and we've been pulling all the critical software back into GM. So we do our own powertrain software, uh, electrification we have inside now, and also a lot of our active safety software is in-house now, and that is what is uh, similar to the software that's being developed by the engineers working on AutoDrive. And another critical part of all the software is integrating it all together. Uh, so we have a, a large a controls engineering group as well as calibration engineers uh, that are all in-house. And that, that activity is really picked up with our active safety and the new technologies that we have, like our super cruise um, and autonomous vehicle. And talking about the technology and the software, uh, already GM's been known, I know I'm reading about, we talk about on this podcast, um, some really interesting innovations that are already coming out of the company. Yes, GM has a history uh, for being an innovator. Um, starts back with Cadillac was the first to have a uh, electric self-starter in the marketplace. It was great invention back in the um, beginning of the auto industry. Um, another one that I was involved on, I was the lead engineer for the first automotive night vision that was on the 2000 DeVille. And just recently, we had the, um, the first true hands-free driving for the freeway uh, super cruise that's offered on the Cadillac CT6. And just recently, uh, we announced the 2020 Sierra that comes equipped with 15 cameras uh, with the transparent trailer system. And what this does, it allows you to see beyond the trailer as if the trailer wasn't even there. And in engineering, we call it the invisible trailer, uh, but in the marketplace, they're calling it the transparent trailer. And these are all, like, you know, you mentioned these being, you know, these kind of automotive assistive technologies. I mean, this is all little bits that are, get rolled into what we believe is going to be the auto drive, you know, future, right? It's just yes, little it bits of the puzzle are being right. solved. And then eventually it's just going to all come together in one great package. That is exactly what happens. So each of these features is, you know, works on a little part of it, like night vision with the cameras. It was a passive camera system. Uh, and then with uh, Super Cruise, we have the radars and uh, understanding how we can change lanes um, or stay in, stay in a lane. Um, and then with the uh, combination and stitching together of all the cameras for the transparent trailer, all of that knowledge and the software that we're developing all goes together and helps us as we're working on autonomous vehicle and the other features for active safety. Let's talk about Michigan. You guys are up there. It's uh, you know, a lot of people, people that are interested in this are from all over the country, all over the world even. And in maybe they don't know much about Michigan, right? I mean, it's it's got it, 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 definitely there's a history of Detroit. You know, you hear through the years. I mean, us being in Pittsburgh, everybody thinks we're a dirty steel town, right? So, um, you know, tell us like what, what's the real story? What is it like to be in the tr greater Detroit area uh, and 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 being up there and working and and having a life up in Michigan? Okay, well, when most people think of Michigan, they right away they think of Detroit, mm -hmm. and Detroit back in like the 1920s was like the place to be. I mean, it was amazing. It was a booming town. The auto industry was just exploding. And, and Detroit was truly a great city in the, in the United States. And uh, then we had some, came into some hard times during the Depression. And, uh, and then, of course, with the riots in the 60s. And then slowly, we've been building back up. And now there are actually people moving from the suburbs and moving back into Detroit. And uh, it's a place where if you want to go to the latest, uh, the latest, greatest restaurants, they're all over Detroit, any kind of food you're interested in. And there are chefs from all over the world coming to the city. Uh, the other things in Detroit that are a lot of fun is uh, they have slow rolls. So uh, during the summer and beginning of the fall, uh, you can go into Detroit and you go on these bike rides. And it's like 3,000 people riding their bikes through the streets of Detroit. And it's wonderful. There's, the, there's amazing houses and that were built a lot of them built back in the in the um, 1920s, and so you go through these neighborhoods, and they're still beautiful homes, and the police block off the streets, and it's just it's really a lot of fun. Uh, the other things in Detroit, there's actually Belle Isle, which is now a state park, and 
that's where the Grand Prix is run. And uh, also, so Detroit is about 20 minutes from our Warren campus, the Technical Center. And further west, about 45 minutes from Detroit, is our Milford Proving Grounds. Mm -hmm. And that's in a more rural setting. And uh, out in that area, there's a lot of hiking and biking and you can go kayaking. There are a lot of lakes as well as, you know, the, the Detroit River itself. We have a lot of lakes in Michigan and many, many of our employees uh, own boats, speedboats or kayaks. I'm a big kayaker. I can actually go out the back of my house and kayak up to the Detroit River. So it's a lot of fun. Um, in Michigan, you will experience the four seasons. Uh, we have it all. <laughs> um, of course, we have the Great Lakes, and we like to say they're unsalted and shark-free. Um, so they're really beautiful. Uh, we have uh, the Sleeping Bear Dunes is a national, national lake shore and was voted one of the top top vacation spots in the United States. Uh, we also have Traverse City, which has peninsulas out into uh, Lake Michigan that are just beautiful. And Mackinac Island, which is, uh, you go back in time because there are no cars allowed. All the transportation is either by bike or horse or walking. So it's uh, uh, the movie Somewhere in Time was was filmed there. And each year in May, I think it's in May, uh, they have a little Somewhere in Time festival. Um, so it's really beautiful. And the Upper Peninsula in Michigan is just like no other. It is so beautiful. And, and it's, it's it's such a great location, too, because you're, you're not far from Cleveland, Chicago, here in Pittsburgh, where, you know, a lot of other things are happening, too. So, I mean, that that's like, you know, a day trip in a lot of cases to go to some of those. It is. It's just like a five-hour drive to get yeah. to Chicago. It took me four hours to get here to Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. So, or you can also go into, into Windsor, into Canada. We're about four hours from Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, and we're actually, Detroit is the only part of the United States that is north of Canada. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, also motorsports. I mean, uh, I've, you know, been up there in the Ann Arbor area, you know, Michigan International Speedway. I was just a great culture around that, you know, obviously with the, you know, folks, you guys being there and everything around Detroit too. And speaking of the area and these communities, there's actually GM does do a lot involved in the communities in the area. Yes, GM does. Uh, GM has a program called a Team GM Cares and we also have something called GM Doers. So GM Cares is for serving the community where our employees live and work. And uh, we can coordinate and communicate volunteer opportunities to GM employees. So there are posts sent out on opportunities for volunteering that are available. And since 2010, so in the past nine years, we've logged over 360,000 volunteer hours in the area. Um, and also the value of that is $8.7 million. So it's been a lot of volunteer work done for the community by GM. And some of the things that we're involved in, uh, there's a project every summer. It's called the Cody Rouge Revitalization Program. And we have teams of GM volunteers that go into the schools in Detroit. And we do things like paint. Uh, we paint the classrooms. There was uh, one of our uh, designers from design staff actually painted this beautiful mural in the hallway of one of the elementary schools. And it's great. It's great to be able to give back to the community and know that the children will be inspired, inspired by that mural especially. So we paint, we clean, we garden, uh, we do all, all the things to try to make it a better place for the students to study. Um, we also have uh, their blood drives every Every facility in GM, it seems like there's a blood drive available mm -hmm. if you, and, and that we do it during company time. And that time also goes to this GM doers program. And based on the amount of hours that you put into an organization, GM will donate money to the organization. And that's part of the GM doers. Well, we've talked a lot about how great it is to be there. So let's talk about how people can get to General Motors. <laughs> okay. So there's a lot of opportunities coming up here yes. for, uh, for our, our, our students listening out there. Yes, there are. Currently for 2020, uh, we have some full-time positions available in electrical hardware, mechanical hardware, controls, and software. We're trying to get additional positions for interns in 2020 but we will definitely have internships available for 2021. 
So the easiest way to apply for a entry-level position at General Motors is to go to careers.gm.com and type in the word TRACK, T-R-A-C-K, into the job search field. TRACK stands for Technical Rotation and Career Knowledge. And that is the program where we rotate new employees uh, through different areas of engineering. And it's a two-year program, and there will be four six-month assignments. And the assignments are determined by this little matchmaking event that takes place. So each of the track engineers will go to some mixers that we have where the managers with new positions will be available for them to discuss or ask questions about the positions. And it's also an opportunity for the hiring managers to meet the students or the track engineers. And so then the track engineers rate the positions one through five, one being the one they'd most like to be in. Um, and then the hire, hiring managers also uh, select the track engineers that they'd like to have in their position, and they're ranked one to five again. And then this little matchmaking event takes place, and uh, then it's determined which position that track engineer will be assigned to. So that is the way that entry-level engineers start their careers at GM. And another great thing about uh, starting work at GM is something, it's a program that we call Jumpstart. And there are some engineers who've been there, or it's more than just engineers. Anyone at GM can join Jumpstart. But mostly it's younger people in the, co in the company. And it's for both work and social events. So they tour GM facilities. They have little get-togethers after work. Uh, they attend sporting events, entertainment. They go camping. So a lot of fun activities, and especially for people that are moving to the Detroit area and are new to the area, it's a great way to have instant friends and people to do things with. That sounds great. Um, do you have any tips for people that, uh, you know, when they're putting together their resumes, um, you know, and to, to kind of get the best chance to get in the door? Yeah, so looking at resumes, one of the things we're looking for is keywords, and we actually do automated keyword searches as well. So if you've worked on something like MATLAB, if you've worked on Simulink, if you've used vSpy, make sure you put those words in your resume. And it even really helps us as we're sorting through resumes. If you have a field called skills, a section for skills, and you actually list list those different skills that you've developed. And the great thing about engineering is that skills that you use, uh, whether you're a mechanical engineer or a electrical engineer, even chemical engineer, biomedical engineer, uh, you are learning critical thinking and learning to use tools that you can use in any field of engineering. So we have, we have people working at GM that are biomedical or chemical engineers, and I have an electrical my group is primarily electrical, but I do have mechanical engineers working on my team as well. Excellent. Well, it sounds like General Mose, you guys have a great company culture out there from the sounds of it. Uh, it sounds like a lot of great opportunities for the students out there with the Auto Drive Challenge. You looking for podcasters? By the way? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, but no, this is great. Um, and, and once again, what are those places that people can go and sign up and, and uh, uh, apply? So the easiest way to apply is to go to the App Store on your Android or iOS phone and download the AutoDrive Challenge app. There you'll find a GM1 pager that has QR codes uh, that are currently uh, that are for our currently open positions. These will take you directly to the posting where you can apply. And after after you apply for a job at GM, uh, this is what's going to happen. Uh, we have people that will review your resumes and they'll look for uh, certain key experiences and key skill sets. So just to share a little bit on the hiring process, once we receive the application, the resumes will be reviewed and they'll be determined which ones will move on to the next step based on who has the key experiences that we're looking for as well as the right skill sets. And it will be determined who will take the next step. And the next set step will be to complete an online assessment. And there again, it gets filtered one more time. And those that are selected will be invited to record some responses to questions on higher view. And with higher view, they'll start out with some trial questions so that the applicants can get a feel for how the process works. And we want to make sure that everybody does that trial, does the trial questions first because it helps to understand how the real questions, how the real questions will work. So once you go through the trial, 
Then they'll go to the actual questions, and there they will record the questions. It's video and audio. And those questions, those responses will then be reviewed uh, by another team of uh, people at GM that will determine who from there will go on to the next step. And the next step is actually live interviews. And for full-time positions, there are two interviewers. There's one for, for internships. And these will be over Skype. And uh, usually they're scheduled back-to-back. -back, and so they'll be able to go through them in one time period at least. And they're usually about an hour long. They will receive the questions that we ask are going to be behavioral-based questions, and we look for responses that include the situation, the task, or action, and the result. We call this the STAR interview format, and they do get information on that when they're given the request to interview. And, of course, to make, make the interviewee at ease, the interviewers will walk them through and will prompt for additional information when needed. So, and then based on those uh, those live interviews, uh, the final decision will be made and they'll be notified usually one to two weeks after those interviews. It sounds like General Motors is a great place to work, great company culture, a lot of awesome things doing and, and, uh, and a great place for all that great talent that we see in the auto drive challenge uh, year to year here. Yes, it's been really excited, exciting for me to be involved in the Auto Drive program. I'm meeting so many wonderful and talented engineers, and I've also been involved in the interview process. And we are very excited about the future for GM, just based on these these engineers that we're we're getting in. It's it's a very exciting time to be in the automotive business, and an exciting time to be working at General Motors. Everybody out there, get that SAE Auto Drive Challenge app, not just for the resumes and, and these links to, for these opportunities with General Motors, but also all the great information uh, throughout the competition here. So you are informed and uh, and, and looking forward to uh, some of the students in Auto Drive uh, hopefully getting to meet you in the interview process. Nancy, thank you so much for taking time with us today. Thank you, Mike. It was great meeting you and great being a part of this program. Thank you for listening to Level 4, the SAE Auto Drive Challenge podcast. Make sure you download our app on your smartphone for updates and contact information. The show notes for this episode and all others can be found at autodrive.fireside.fm.